In this recording, we'll look at identifying large squares of ones in a Carnot map and how to write the resulting simplified expression. And we're going to consider a four variable Carnot map here. And remember that when simplifying a Boolean expression, we start off by writing ones for each of the places where the combinations of variables are satisfied and zeros elsewhere. And have a look at our some of our other recordings for specific examples of that. Here I'm going to focus on looking at the areas that would denote eight squares, four squares, two squares and one squares once we have done that. And the first thing we would do is look for eight squares of ones. And there's two main ways these can appear. First of all, it might be a block of two rows or two columns together, such as the example of the middle two rows shaded in orange in the Carnot map here. That would be an example of an eight square. And what would it be in this case? And you'll notice that orange eight square is all in the two rows of S, but some of it's in P, some in P bar, some of it's in Q, some in Q bar, and some of it's in R, and some of it's in R bar. So it can only be defined then in terms of S. So if we call the overall expression for the circuit F, here F equals S. But eight squares can also be broken up so that it's the top two, sorry, it's the top row and the bottom row, or the leftmost column and the rightmost column. This is also actually an eight square. And let's think about what this one is. And this one here, if we call the whole expression F, is in the columns for R bar, whereas it is not in a consistent state for any of the other variables. So for this one, that eight square is R bar. Now once we've found any eight squares of ones in the Carnot map, we then look for four squares. And again, these can appear in several different ways. First of all, they might actually be a single row or column of the Carnot map. For example, look at the first diagram here where it is just the leftmost column. And again, if we're writing the expression as F, what is that leftmost column? It is always in P bar and it is always in R bar. So that is actually F is P bar R bar for that first example. But four squares can also appear broken up across two squares of the top row and the bottom row or two squares of the left column and the rightmost column. So let's look at this one here, for instance. This second one here is actually expression F is equal to, in this case, they are both in P and also all of them are consistently in S bar. As the name suggests, four squares can also appear as the square of four, as in this third example, which you can see is consistently in S and also consistently in P bar, giving an expression P bar S. And a four square can also appear across the four corners of the Carnot map, as in this final example. And when it has that appearance, in this case, for instance, those four orange squares are all in R bar and they are also all in S bar. So those are the four types of appearance that a four square can take. Now you can also get two squares and remember that one, we start with the biggest squares first. So once you've done any eight squares and four squares, we then look for two squares, remembering that those can overlap with the squares already selected. And you can start to see why this is, because the eight squares were defined in terms of a single variable, whereas you'll notice the four squares we looked at were defined in terms of two variables. And similarly, any two squares will be defined in terms of three variables. And these can appear in two main ways. So consider this first one, for instance, where the two squares do appear together, either in a column, as in this case, or it could also be in a row. Now this expression is always in one of the columns for P, it's always in the rows for Q bar, and it's always in the column, one of the columns for R bar. So that is F equals P and Q bar and R bar. But two squares can also be broken up top and bottom or leftmost and rightmost column. In this case, if we look at our expression for F, 
it is always in one of the columns for P. It's always in one of the rows here for S bar and it's also always in the column for R bar. So again, that two square is defined in terms of those three variables. And finally, of course, if you're left with any single squares that are not connected to any other squares in eight squares, four squares, two squares or one squares, that will give an expression in terms of all four variables, which is clearly the least simple. And this one, for instance, here, that orange square is in P bar. It's also in Q bar. It's in R and it's in S. So that's how we identify eight squares, four squares, two squares and one squares of ones in a Carnot map. Have a look at some of our other recordings for examples of applying this to simplifying actual expressions.